You're watching Color 10 News at 10 in high definition. A welcome home sign hangs outside the home of one of the three Ohio women who escaped captivity yesterday. Good evening, I'm Ashley Katz. And I'm David Oliver. I was joyful. I was glad I was able to hug her and, and thanks God that she came back home. Tonight, police say a former school bus driver held Gina DeJesus captive along with Michelle Knight, Amanda Berry, and her six-year-old daughter who was born in captivity. Castro was under arrest tonight along with two of his brothers, and police say a neighbor kicked open the door to the house there after hearing a woman screaming inside. Women there were, behind, were, were between 14 and 20 years old when they were kidnapped from the same neighborhood in separate incidents. New tonight, a major part of locating those missing Ohio women was the actions of one neighbor who noticed something unusual and went to investigate. Color 10's Laura Kennedy is live tonight with the importance of knowing your neighbors. Laura. Thank you, Ashley. I'm at Springfield's Victims Memorial Garden where there's a special section for those three women that are still missing from Springfield. Local area neighborhood watch members say this whole situation highlights the importance of being aware of anything out of the ordinary. I think it's really important that you know your neighbors. Beverly Wilson is the block captain for her neighborhood watch. Not only for safety, but just to know what's going on. She's spending a typical Tuesday tending to her garden and keeping an eye on the activity on her street. The people that live next door, if they're going to have work done or somebody's going to be in their house while they're, go they're gone, they call me first. These three blocks on Hilton Avenue are part of the Neighborhood Watch program. It's a system residents and police rely on to keep the area safe. Neighbors here on Water Street say a big part of Neighborhood Watch is keeping an eye on the cars or people coming through the neighborhood. Watch participant Steve Sisko says another part is getting to know the people who live on your block. It is paramount that you know your neighbors that you identify with them, ask questions. The program's slogan says it all. See something, say something. People should never ever be afraid of reporting anything they see that looks unusual to the police department. The crime prevention hotline is anonymous. Springfield residents can report unusual activity 24 hours a day. Beverly and Steve believe in this program because of the impact it could make in the life of someone in danger. They find kids that are not being taken care of, that are being locked in closets for years. You know, you need to know your neighbors. They say all it takes is being aware. Beverly told me that the Ohio case definitely reminded her of the case right here in Springfield of our three missing women. And she says it gave her a little bit of hope that there might be hope for those three women and finding them. Reporting live, Laura Kennedy, back to you. Laura, thanks so much. And of course, that Springfield case she was talking about there dates back to 1992. You'll recall Cheryl Levitt, Susie Streeter, and Stacy McCall disappeared from Streeter's home. Since then, Springfield police, family, and friends have, of course, chased leads and fought for answers. Stacy McCall's mother spoke to us and says the Ohio case brings hope that her daughter will be found. Even though it was 10 years, it could still be 20 or 21 years. The same thing can happen. You know, this just reconfirms things. They need to keep looking until they find the three women from Springfield. If you think you have information, please call. Let us find our kids. We're looking for that one piece of information that's going to read it, lead us down the right path and somebody out there probably has that information and uh, you know we continue to look at that stuff when it comes in that that may be the phone call that really leads us down the right path. Springfield police asked that you if you have any information about our missing women cases here locally contact them or Crime Stoppers at 869 tips. Color 10 visited the Murney Clinic here in town which specializes in mental health. We asked the director how the discovery of the Ohio women could impact local families that still have loved ones missing. She says while it can give them some hope it is helping that helps now to understand that those missing persons most of them do not return. Women, But that is very rare and uh, while it's difficult to not want to hold on to that hope at the same time it probably is easier and maybe uh, in some respects healthier to let go of that particular option, like that they're likely to come back.
And be sure to stay with Color 10 for continuing coverage of the case in Ohio and the Springfield missing women. The newest information is always online at OzarksFirst.com. Chief Meteorologist Jamie Warner is tracking something we really haven't seen much of in May, warm weather. That's right, and take a look at the temperatures right now at this hour. Currently in the 60s, just about area-wide. There are a couple areas in the 50s, 56 in Raleigh, 55 in West Plains, and 58 in Joplin. Here in Springfield, though, still holding on to 60 degrees, and that is very, very mild compared to where we were late last week and through this past weekend. Uh, skies are mostly clear. Beautiful evening really across the Ozarks. Out west though we go and we find showers and thunderstorms and we've seen some severe thunderstorms. These have produced some hail across parts of central Kansas and this is associated with a disturbance which is gradually going to be making its way across eastern Kansas and then across Missouri during the day on Wednesday and that will lead to I think some additional cloud cover at least a shot at maybe a shower in the morning west of Highway 6 and possibly a shower or isolated thunderstorm east of Highway 65 during the afternoon. It's going to be warm again, too. 55 at 7 o'clock, mid-70s by lunchtime, and I think we could get close to 80 tomorrow afternoon. Jamie, thanks. A developing story to tell you about now at 10 o'clock tonight. Three bodies found in rural Kansas and an Ozarks connection. Family says they're still missing as a one-year-old girl. Kevin Schwaller spoke briefly with the grandmother of the missing child who lives in the Ozarks. What'd she have to say, Kevin? Well, she said she was telling her son and the father of this child that his baby had not been found. We have recovered three bodies. Um, there's one female and two males. All of them are adults. This time we are working to, um, to identify the victims. Now that was the Franklin County Sheriff. The bodies were discovered yesterday afternoon. The little girl's mother, Kaylee Bailey, was reported missing on May 1st. Her boyfriend and the owner of this property, as well as someone else who lived here, are also missing. Some fear they may be the dead. The authorities are looking for a man in connection with these killings. 27-year-old Kyle Flack, he also lived on the property. And we are still in contact with that grandmother this evening, trying to set up something with her. Now authorities have have refused to say whether why they have not issued an Amber Alert for the missing child and that is a major concern of the grandmother who we have been speaking with. The father, Bailey, is currently in the Laclede County Jail here in the Ozarks. We'll continue to follow this. Thanks, Kevin. New at 10, a West Plains businessman is offering up his property to any gun maker that moves its operation to the Ozarks. John Negri is extending this invitation of a free 20-year lease on one of three parcels of land if a gun manufacturer or distributor decides to relocate. Michael Evans made the pitch this morning on his West Plains conservative radio show, America's Voice Now. He says Negri approached him about the idea earlier this year after companies in states like Colorado Colorado and New York announced they're leaving because of restrictive gun regulations. Uh, not only would bringing these firearms manufacturers here in Missouri provide us with, with the jobs and, and infrastructure initiative, it would be you know a benefit to our to not only our community but our, our state overall while simultaneously benefiting their situation as well. According to Evans, some companies have already expressed interest in the project. The project also has picked up support from Lieutenant Governor Peter Kinder and pro-gun lobbyist group Gun Owners of America. A motorcyclist has died tonight after colliding with an SUV. This is breaking news tonight on Color 10 News at 6. This happened near Republic Road and Kansas Expressway in Springfield. Police say 67-year-old Larry Iverson was on his motorcycle when a Jeep Liberty pulled into his path. A Missouri senator wants answers from military leaders about sexual assault accusations. Claire McCaskill has been an outspoken critic of the problem. Over the weekend, an Air Force officer who led a sexual assault prevention unit was accused of groping a woman. During a hearing today, McCaskill questioned the Air Force Chief of Staff about policy changes that can make the military safer. If a victim does not believe that the system is capable of believing her, there's no point in risking your entire career. The Pentagon released a new report today showing sexual assaults in the military on the rise with as many as 26,000 claims last year. Mercy Hospital has 80 jobs to fill in Springfield. There will be an event tomorrow and Thursday 
at the Missouri Career Center. That's over at 2900 East Sunshine, the old price cutter store over there. It runs from 8.30 until 2.30. Jobs are available in environmental and flood services, plus surgical and lab assistance. And you can find the application to fill out at OzarksFirst.com. Mercy will have another job fair next Tuesday and Thursday also at the Career Center. New at 10, you know nearly everyone's going to show up to a party when the party for those with it's for those with excellent attendance. The North Springfield Betterment Association hosted this event tonight for elementary students. To qualify, a student had to have 99% attendance during the school year. More than 630 students from Northside's 14 elementary schools did so. They enjoyed games, prizes, and some snacks. This is the 16th year for this program. Well, just two counties in Missouri are participating in a community effort to help abused and neglected youth. And Greene County is one of them. We need to connect them with some positive role model and adult in their life. In tonight's Family Matters report, how the program works, the reason it is so important now. And we hope that you will find us on our Facebook page. First, go to OzarksFirst.com. Look for the Facebook icon there. Once you click that, you're on our page. Hit the like button. Tonight's Family Matters report here at 10. A first of its kind community effort is underway to help our area's abused and neglected youth. In Cullerton, Shannon Miller explains more about the crossover youth program. Green County is one of just two counties in Missouri taking on the initiative. The crossover youth model helps identify children under foster and probation supervision and will connect them with community resources as part of their time with the juvenile office. There are more than 800 children currently in foster care with the office and an additional 200 on probation for committing crimes. Abuse and neglect supervisors say foster children are 11 times more likely to commit a delinquent act and more than two times more likely to commit criminal acts as an adult. What the crossover youth model will do is allow us to better coordinate services and offer treatment to those youth 
um, earlier to prevent that from happening. At least half a dozen organizations, including Springfield Public Schools, court-appointed special advocates, and OTC are on board to help provide services like counseling and mentoring for the youth. Abuse and neglect supervisor Jeremy Trapp says he hopes the program provides children with people to turn to even after their time with the juvenile office. We need to connect them with some positive role model and adult in their life where they can they can come back to when things get tough. Trapp says the program is still in the beginning stages, but expects it to be fully implemented in the juvenile office within the next few years. Back to you. All right, Shannon, thanks. Jamie Warner back with an update on our nice warm forecast tonight. Yeah, we got a taste of that today. Made it in the 70s area-wide. How about 80? You want to see 80? Well, a few of us might just do that tomorrow afternoon. We'll last into this Mother's Day weekend. A look at that potential in your full forecast coming up. Now weather with Color 10 News Chief Meteorologist Jamie Warner. Well, it took a little while, but we're finally looking at temperatures where they should be, if not a little bit warmer than where they should be for this time of year. Let's take a look at the highs today. It felt so nice out there. Skies were partly cloudy. Just a beautiful day from start to finish. And everybody sampled some 70s. In fact, we got close to 80 in some areas. Fort Leonard Wood, 78 this afternoon. Rolla, 78 this afternoon. Here in Springfield, we made it to 76. The average high for this state is 73. Out there right now, it still feels pretty good. Temperatures are dropping through the 60s into the upper 50s. We've got mostly clear to partly cloudy skies across the area. Of course, you see this batch of showers and thunderstorms back here. Some severe weather with this. We've seen some reports of large hail out of some of these thunderstorms. This disturbance will continue to make its way across Kansas and eventually into Missouri later tonight and through the day on uh, Wednesday. And that will 
at least provide us with some additional cloud cover, if not also help to enhance at least a little bit our chance for a shower or a thunderstorm. The pattern across the United States, though, is still very blocky. And when it gets blocky, things don't like to move very much, very fast. So we still have the same weather players on the map that we had yesterday and really that we had this past weekend. That upper level low that generated the cold and snow slowly making its way to the southeast. We've got this little pop in the pressure pattern across the plains, that little ridge of high pressure keeping things relatively quiet and certainly giving us some warmer weather than we've seen this past uh, weekend. And then we have the system back here in the uh, southwestern U.S. That will actually be our, our next bigger weather players. It will generate some unsettled weather, I think, Thursday into Friday. And then this weekend, we get this trough here in the eastern U.S. developing. And we're going to get a pretty substantial shot of cool air arriving Saturday night temperatures dropping into the 40s and then on Sunday Mother's Day it looks like we'll find highs only in the 60s but it will be a very short-lived round of colder weather as we're going to find this ridge moving in by early next week and that will lead to maybe the warmest temperatures we've seen yet this year. It looks like we'll be in the 80s on Tuesday and maybe well into the 80s uh, Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Let's take you hour by hour though. The short-term forecast looking quiet overnight tonight. Here's our disturbance. Look for clouds to spread in. It looks like through noon on Wednesday Certainly, we're going to find mostly cloudy skies along and west of Highway 65, maybe a spotty shower. That disturbance heads east, takes a lot of that cloud cover with it, and we get some daytime heating. So we're going to have a better shot at maybe generating a shower or thunderstorm, especially east of Highway 65 and along and west of Highway 63 tomorrow afternoon. Those will fade away quickly in the evening hours. Looks like Wednesday night, a fairly quiet night, but we may see some additional shower or thunderstorm activity coming out of Kansas into west central Missouri by Thursday morning. And then as a front sort of settles south into the area, we have that, another disturbance moving through, we will probably find scattered shower and thunderstorm activity during the day on Thursday. That front will settle south through the area on Friday, and that will lead to some cooler temperatures heading into the weekend. Overnight tonight, down about 54 for the low. Uh, looks like for tomorrow, we'll find partly cloudy skies. Winds uh, out of the south at about 5 to 15 and up near 80. And I think there will be some areas that hit the 80-degree mark. A slight chance for a shower or thunderstorm. The better chance is west of Highway 65 in the morning and east of Highway 65 during the afternoon. And the areas that have the best chance at seeing 80, maybe down across northern Arkansas, areas like Mountain Home will likely hit 80 tomorrow afternoon. 78 on Thursday, Friday about 70, mostly cloudy, chance for showers, better chances I think to the south. Saturday looks mostly sunny, a slight chance for shower heading into the evening hours as another cold front moves through and that will usher in some cool temperatures for Mother's Day. But really, it's springtime, highs in the 60s are going to feel awful nice in that sunshine and then we get into next week and it looks like uh, temperatures rebounding very quickly. I was thinking mm -hmm. we got to get our lake water warmed up because we're heading mm -hmm. into that time of the year you know, too. I need to check <laughs> that. I, I would imagine that given the cold spring oh. that we've seen that uh, we are well behind where we were at this point last year. Hopefully the sun will warm it up. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Thanks, Jamie. Bye. We didn't intentionally try to bring somebody to the meet that wasn't going to perform. The NCAA reprimanded Drury swimming coach Brian Reynolds. Dan Lewis is coming up in sports with that story. Also highlights from a Hammonds Field doubleheader. It's all next.
the Chevy Dealer Sports Report with Dan Lucy. The Missouri State Bears opened a five-game non-conference homestand tonight at Hammonds Field. Keith Gutton's Bears trying to snap a four-game losing streak against Oral Roberts. The Golden Eagles in town tonight and tomorrow night. And Oral Roberts breaks on top in the second. Kevin Cho would line this one back to the pitcher. Tyler Thompson knocks it down, but everybody's safe, including Chris Williams, who scores. It was 1-0. Then Matt Brandy would ground this one to third, gets past Joey Hawkins. Austin Colt comes around to score from second, and it was 2-0. Golden Eagles. Oral Roberts gets more in the fourth. Logan Dementio would single to left. Cho comes in to score to make it 3-0. Now bottom half of the fourth inning, Missouri State's Dylan Becker would single to right and Keenan Maddox comes in to score to make it 3-1, but that is all the offense that the Bears could muster. Oral Roberts handing Missouri State its fifth straight loss, 4-1. St. Louis Cardinals Chicago Cubs renewed their 128-year-old rivalry tonight at Wrigley Field. Cards roaring into the friendly confines, winners of six in a row with the best record of the National League. Cardinals owned a three-game lead on both the Reds and the Pirates going into tonight's action. And this is the first of 19 meetings between these two teams. St. Louis would jump out in front second inning. Alan Craig muscles up, takes this one deep to left, and it leaves Wrigley in a hurry. A solo shot to make it 1-0. The Cubs, though, would answer that blast in the fourth. Nate Shearholtz would go deep to center. This one sails over the Ivy and gone. A two-run home run to make it a 2-1 Chicago lead. Cubs flashing the leather in the fifth inning. Matt Carpenter up. Line drive to third. It's snagged by Luis Valbuena. St. Louis threatening again in the eighth. Two on and two out. Yadier Molina at second. And he's picked off by Carlos Marmol. That would end the threat. Cubs hold on and win two to one. So the cards now 20 and 12. We'll wrap up the short two game set tomorrow afternoon. Kansas City Royals lost to Baltimore 4 3. Matt Wieters drove in three of the Orioles' runs, including the game winner in the eighth inning. Springfield Cardinals looking for redemption after giving up 15 runs to Tulsa on Monday. And they got it this afternoon. Excellent pitching and timely hitting Tulsa. Tiger in the dugout. Not sure why. We were told it was a top secret reason. Springfield would take the roar out of the Tiger in the third. Bases loaded two out. Ruben Gotai pass first in the right. Boone Whiting and Mike O'Neill both scored 2-0. Tulsa threatening in the fourth. Two on, nobody out. Whiting strikes out Henry Wrigley. Then he'd get Angeles Nina to ground the third. Gotai turns the old 5-4-3 double play the long way. Cards out of the inning. St. Louis GM John Mazalock likes it. He also likes Whiting's outing. He gets Jason Langfels here swinging. Boone Whiting. Seven innings, gave up no runs, four hits, seven strikeouts. Kevin Sechrist in on the eighth. Tulsa had a man at third, one out. Delta Clary Jr.'s bunt to second. Luis Mateos throw home in time. Travis Tartamello with the tag. Cards win, two to nothing. The NCAA has publicly reprimanded nine-time national champion Drury swimming and diving coach Brian Reynolds, saying that he tried to, quote, discredit the selection process of the championship. This all stems from a clerical error at this year's national championships. The NCAA has a new way of entering swimmers into the meet. Reynolds says he and his staff accidentally entered a relay team according to the old guidelines, which put in an ineligible swimmer. The NCAA slapped Reynolds on the wrist. We talked to Reynolds today. He says there was no intent to discredit the process. There's an entry protocol procedure that we did not follow. Um, we didn't intentionally try to bring somebody to the meet that wasn't going to perform, but he was a part of a relay that qualified, and by the virtue of entering that relay, it entered him in the meet. So it had no bearing on what happened at the swim meet. The NCAA has to make light of anybody that violates any protocol procedures. So the NCAA just kind of reprimanding him, and that's all. There's not going to be any more punishments or anything. The that. tiger in the dugout, the song, Dude, the eye of the tiger. <laughs> I asked the guy, I said, what, what's the Why deal is with the tiger? The tiger? He goes, tiger. we can't tell you it's a secret. Really? And then they lost, so yeah. I guess it doesn't Maybe matter. Tiger wasn't good luck, was it? Uh, no. It sure wasn't. Mm -hmm. We'll yeah. have to get to the bottom of that Thanks, one. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> we'll be right back.
are tonight's winning lottery numbers. And news will continue in a moment. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time tonight, aren't yes, we? Yes, we are. Hey, Can't even warm. talk about the weather. <laughs> the Supreme Court is warm today. Life That's is right. good. Thanks for watching. Growers Online at OzarksFirst.com. Good night.